we'd seen some fish hitting on the surface, I had two bait rods out, so I switched back to the Yozuri minnow plug, and we got a decent brown here. So I'm gonna work my way over here and kind of get the fish up on the shore. I don't have a net, but he, you know, he's 12 inch brown. He's a nice fish, he's a good start to the day. Oh, that's gonna be dinner. But uh, my first trout of the year at French Meadows Reservoir. Beautiful brown. That fish is going home for dinner. All right. See if I can catch another one. But uh, he jumped all over that Yozuri El Minnow, a little rainbow pattern. First cast. Awesome. Okay, so there's the. There's the bait I was using. It's a small Yozuri L minnow. It's a slow sinking minnow plug. It's a rainbow pattern. But there's a lesson to be learned by that. We got here early. Um, we weren't catching anything. We had one nice fish chase uh, the L minnow, a larger version. Then I switched to a cast master. No response on that. So I put out two bait rods. Well, I reeled in to check the worm. I got snagged. Broke off the hook. But all of a sudden, a trout ran up and he grabbed the sinker. I couldn't believe it. We didn't get any of that on film. So I thought, well, I, I rebaited up. I put a new hook on, put a new worm out there. And while I, was, while I was doing that, we saw a couple fish hit on the surface, you know, kind of roll. So I put on another, you know, I put on yell minnow, which is a smaller version of what I was using before, and first cast. So what I think happened, I think the fish were lethargic first thing in the morning. But now the sun's up, they seem more active, so hopefully we'll catch some more. But uh, don't be afraid to switch from lures to bait and back again, depending on what you see. And when I saw that fish come up and hit the sinker, I felt like they were getting more aggressive. And when I saw a couple of them break on the surface here, it kind of confirmed that. So that worked out. Nothing else, I got dinner, so we'll go from there. Fishhuntshoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. It is time for part two of our bank fishing for trout discussion and uh, it is time to talk about casting lures from the bank. Now I got a rod right over there. I got some power bait on it. Um, that was the focus of my last video. That rod's out there soaking soaking away, waiting for a bite. It's been out there for maybe five minutes or so. Um, I've set up my second spinning rod and uh, I am throwing a small spoon on it. I'm actually throwing one of my trigger spoon juniors on it. That's a small version of the of the trigger spoon. Um, but you could be throwing any kind of spoon. You could be throwing a cast master, or a crocodile, a cripple lure, a half ounce humdinger. You could be throwing a spinner, a rooster tail, a panther martin, a minnow plug, a small, you know, countdown a Rapala or a Countdown Yozuri, anything like that. You could be throwing a Maglip maybe. But the bottom line is, lures can be very effective when cast from the bank. It's mid-December out here, the water is cold, and any trout that are around are either near the surface or they're in close to the bank or both. So fan casting from the shoreline can be very effective. But for the best results, you know, you've got to run with a lure that you have confidence in and carry three or four different models so you have something to experiment with, you know, kind of, kind of determine what the fish want on any given day. But beyond that, when, when you're casting, if you look out behind me here at the lake, you know, I've got shorelines all over here. This is all dirt around here. So out in front of me, I have about 180 degrees of water available to me. Now, obviously, Right along the shoreline, I can see the bottom. Right near the shoreline, it's only a 10 inches to a foot deep. So, you know, while I don't want to make a cast right up on shore, I do want to work all the available water in front of me. So I want to fan cast kind of all the way around the dial of the clock. And what I like to start doing is I like to cast out as far as possible and work the lure right under the surface. And I go, you know, right around the right around the sundial, as they would say, you know. I want to work all that water out in front of me near the surface. And then I want to go back through that again, but I want to start counting the lure down. Maybe I count one, two, three, four, five, then I retrieve, you know. And that's going to allow me not only to cover all the water, you know, in front of me in an arc, it's also going to allow me to cover the water column 
from the surface down to as deep as I want to go. And today, you know, I might count a lure all the way down to 30 just to see what happens, you know, out there in that deeper water. But the point is, you, you know, you, you don't have the mobility you have in a boat, so you want to cover as much of the available water as possible. And you do that by fan casting, you do that by working your lures down. Now, in terms of working the lures, most of the time you can cast a lure out, figure out what retrieve speed gives you the best action with that lure, and you can catch fish just on a nice steady retrieve. But it pays to experiment. Try faster retrieves, slower retrieves. Try stopping the retrieve for a second. Try giving the, the spoon or the spinner or whatever you're fishing some twitches, some pauses. Mix it up. Sometimes you'll find out, you know what, they won't hit the lure on a steady retrieve, but if I pop it and stop it and, you know, give them some extra action, I'll start, you know, picking up fish. So it's all about experimenting. It's all about dialing in where the fish are, what lure they want, and what presentation that they respond to the best. You know, you start to check off those boxes, you start to eliminate lures. You start to eliminate water. You start to, to eliminate, you know, just a lot of variables and pretty soon you're just left with a strategy that's working on the day that you're on the water. Tomorrow, it's a different day. You get to start all over again pretty much from square one. But to just start to dial in what the fish want when you're out on the water and when you're bank fishing, man, that is triply important. You don't have a ton of options. I advise fishing a spot anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes and then moving on. But let's face it, you can only walk so far in any given day. So you want to maximize your time at each spot by thoroughly cover covering the water and going through an entire repertoire of approaches to see what you can use, what you can do that's gonna make the fish strike and then just really dial in on that approach. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I hope this helps you catch some fish this winter. I'm out of here for now. I wanna thank you guys for all the support on the channel. And if you're looking for lures, rods, whatnot, check out the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store. We got great gear at great prices. And if you haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, please do. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have a YouTube channel. We wouldn't be putting out all this great content. We're having a blast doing what we're doing. And uh, we know it's helping some of you guys catch more and bigger fish. And that's our goal. So anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. You guys have a great day. And uh, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube.